everybody. It's Mark Spectre Comics, and I'm back. Uh, I've been watching a little bit lately. A lot of people in the uh, community are doing their top 50 comics, whether it's raw, slab, so be it. So I figured I'd let you guys a little peek into my collection, my PC. And uh, I was thinking, you know, the whole top 50 right off the bat, I was like, you know, finding that a lot of the time these videos were quite long and um, and for me personally to do top 50 in my PC is very difficult because I collect DC Marvel and independence whereas most people usually just collect either Marvel DC or independence so um, I decided to do it a little bit differently and I was gonna switch it up and do my top 25 of each. So I will have my top 25 of DC, Marvel, Independence, and then Slabs. So um, by no particular order, I'm gonna start with DC today and uh, give you guys a little bit of a glimpse into my personal collection. So um, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, hit that bell notification because I know lately uh, some of the videos people are putting out there, people are not getting notified when they come out. So hitting that bell is it's quite important. Um, got a little drink here today. You're probably wondering, well, Dave, what do you got here today? Uh, so I'll show you. This is. Basil Hayden's. It's a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. And um, fun little fact here, as you can see, it says artfully aged. Um, initially, when this company came out, they were aging them six years. And then um, I think within the last few years, they changed it up. So it's, I guess, a little bit of a inside secret in how long it's been actually aged. Um, Shout out to Edwin, Comic Jabroni. I'm personally not uh, going to describe all the hints, the flavor profile, and whatnot. I just like to drink it, enjoy it. And uh, like he always says, there's no right or wrong way to drink it. So uh, cheers to that. And uh, I personally drink it neat. And I got a few little uh, whiskey rocks in there to keep it nice and cold. All right, enough of that. You guys are all here for the books. So, uh, let's start. And um, the books in particular, you're going to get a little bit of everything. You're going to get variants. You're going to get signed books. You're going to get exclusives, poly bags, uh, eras, a little bit of everything, because that's what I like to collect. A little bit of everything, change it up, and that's what makes my collection unique. All right. First book, so I did my top 25 with three honorable mentions. I'll start with the three honorable mentions and then go from there. First book, Mr. Miracle, number 10. I just love this cover, the whole black negative space. It's just done really well, and it's, uh, it's a good story. All right. Next book, Wonder Woman, number 51. Love this art germ cover. And then my last honorable mention. Um, not too people not too many people know about this character. I, I found it pretty interesting when I when I first grabbed it and this was um the Ray number one, first appearance of the Ray, Ray Terrell. And uh yeah, it's interesting. Pretty neat character. Alright. On to the top 25. First book, Steel number one, The Indestructible Man. First appearance of Commander Steel. Bronze Age, I believe, for 35 center. Uh, something more recent, Batman Who Laughs, number one, Greg Capullo. That was another good example of uh, negative space. 
one of my favorite DC um, funny reads is plot number one. And it does have uh, Bernie Wright's and interior art. It's a fun DC villain. This is Superman Man of Steel, number 18. This is, I think, the third print. First Doomsday. Another fun villain that, honestly, I think they should utilize a little bit more. Justice League Dark, number three. First full appearance, I believe, of the Upside Down Man. Uh, something more recent. Justice League number one. I think this is the 1 in 100 inks only variant. This is what I was talking about. Full variant incentive ratio. One of my favorite covers from the run. Justice League number eight. Next book. Justice League number 25. I don't believe there's anything particular key, I think something about first um, Apex Luther, but other than that, it's not really important. What's more important to me, it has a sentimental value, is because this was the first book I read to my son. So, very cool. I'm going to get this uh, probably graded one day just to keep it, you know, keep it there. So that was a very special book for me. Um, a little John Byrne action here for you Wonder Woman fans. Wonder Woman number 106. So shout out to Ryan Magic Lasso. Big Wonder Woman fan. There we go. Shadow of the Bat number one. And you can see this is a poly bag. I think this is also first Victor's ass. All right. Another cool uh, 90s variant. Green Lantern number 80, and you can see here, the DC Universe label. Whenever you see those books with the DC Universe label, pick them up. They're very low print, even for the 90s, very hard to get, very desirable. Ah, here we go. This is something current, Superman number 14, and this is... The Era, that big controversial cover, one of the um, Superman and I believe Supergirl. As you can see here at the bottom, The Last Temptation of Lois Lane. And at the top here, The Dark Gifts. They ended up recalling this because I guess it was, it was supposedly a little controversial. I love the cover. The cover is amazing. But this book was super hot when it first came out. But it's my only era variant that I have raw in DC. It's a very nice book. Next up, Batman number 609. First appearance of uh, Hush, Thomas Elliot. And it's also Jim Lee. Um, let's give you guys a little something older. So I, know, I know you guys appreciate a little bit of old old action here from DC. This is my oldest Batman book. Batman issue number 170. It's a 12 center. I'm not sure if there's anything significant. I believe this is like the different trade dress, the first issue, but other than that, I just love the cover. And it has a cool date stamp in there. I just like seeing the whole Batman get wrapped up in the in this in the bat symbol very neat my oldest batman book next up this is my oldest dc book very early silver age and it's a 10 center detective comics number 296 and i believe it's this character's first appearance planet master very cool i think i picked this up for 40 bucks but Ten center. Why not? All right. 
Next up, this is the Batman movie special from 1989, number one. There we go. Here's an example of a signed book. So this is Deathstroke issue number 33. Love this cover. And it's signed by the writer Christopher Priest. Picked that up last year. Relatively hot book right now, and this is Year of the Villain, Hell Arisen number three. First full appearance of Punchline. And this is the second print. A little bit harder to get, but not as valuable as the first print. Another signed book. This is You Batgirl Fran, uh, Fans. Batgirl, issue number 30. Love that cover. And it's signed by Norm Raymond. Here's your store incentive ratio that I was talking about. This is Tales from the Dark Multiverse, Blackest Night, number one. Number 163 of 1,000. It's a Comics Elite Premiere exclusive. Very cool. All right. This is a particular fun read for me. This is from DC's Young Animal. This is Collapser. Issue number one. If you're not familiar with this book, pick it up. It's a fun read. Basically a guy who ends up getting a black hole in his chest. Has some really cool... Like super, like super strong powers. Fun read. You can pick this book up for a dollar. Um, next up, another recent character for you Green Lantern fans, Far Sector number one. Uh, let's see, we're getting down to the end. Another signed book, Deathstroke issue number 36. You got all the villains there. Really cool. Signed also by Christopher Priest, the writer. And I got that back at Rhode Island Comic Con. And we're getting down to the last two books. All right. My only magazine that I have for DC. Batman Damned, number one. Cover A, picked this up the day it came out, and I ended up getting this for free. Um, basically, in a nutshell, I had the last copy I picked up off the shelf. Um, person went to go ring me up for all the other books I had and forgot to put this in. So, it's what you call a little bit of comic karma. But this is probably, this is at least a 9 8 copy. Um, there's nothing wrong with this. It could potentially be even like a 9-9. Nine nine. Who knows? But for free, it's awesome. Most notably known for the Batwang, but the interior art and the story is absolutely amazing. And my last book, it's my favorite DC book. It's most certainly not the most expensive. It's not the least, but it's my favorite character. And this is The Flash, if you didn't already know. Um... This is The Flash, issue number one, from 1987. Uh, what's significant about this, I believe this is the first, I guess, Wally West um, story. Like, in his own, you know, Flash itself, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Um, I'm a big Wally West Flash fan. I like The Flash in general, but more particular, Wally West. And... I initially had bought this book graded as a 9-8. The plans were, when I went to one of the conventions, to get it signed by the writer, Mike Barron, and had it cracked open, was going to get it signed by him, and then he had left the, for the day and was unfortunately not able to get it signed. So you can see here, it is a 9-8. I still have the, <laughs> the or original tab on there. So... Hopefully one day I'll get it signed by either the writer or the artist, so forth. But this is my favorite DC book, Flash number one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and stuck around till the end. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share, and so forth. 
I'm going to have, like I said, DC, Marvel, Independence, and then finish it off with Slabs. So, until next time, Watch Back the Comics, out.